there. Welcome to BCPS TV Presents Math 6. For the week of May 18th, I'm your host, Ms. Barr. Before we get started, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ms. Barr and I'm a secondary mathematics resource teacher for BCPS. I'm married to my wonderful husband, Scott, who is a machinist for the DC Metro. I'm also a bonus mom to Bruce, a seventh grader at our Butis Middle, a bonus mom to Charlie, a third grader at our Butis Elementary, and a mom to Kevin, a rambunctious and energetic three and a half year old. Together, we love pizza, movies, baseball, and the outdoors. This week, we will be rounding out the Unit 6 geometry and focusing on three dimensional shapes. Our two objectives for this week are as follows. First, students will identify nets and use nets to find surface area of the solids. And second, students will find the volume of right rectangular prisms with fractional edge lengths. I want you to notice the words that are underlined, such as nets, surface area, volume, and right rectangular prisms. Have you heard of these before? Hopefully the answer is yes. If not, we are going to investigate them further, so follow along. Okay, friends, we're going to get our brains thinking about some mathematics. I want you to look at the gifts on the page labeled A, B, and C. Which gift do you believe will need the most wrapping paper? Explain how you know. I'll give you a moment to think about that. I asked my bonus son, Charlie, what he thought, and here's his answer. I think B um, will need the most wrapping paper because it's the tallest, but then again, I think A will need the same amount because if you squish B down, it would be like the same as A, but C is a little bit shorter than A, so A and B will need the most in my mind. Very good. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. If you had the same answer as Charlie, then great job. If you had a different answer, then also great job. We're going to investigate the concept of wrapping paper as we continue throughout this lesson, so stay tuned. So one of the vocabulary words from our objective was net. What is a net? Well, a net is an arrangement of two dimensional figures that can be folded to form a polyhedron. If you look at the images to the right and below, you will see several nets that when, let's say you drew them on a piece of paper, cut them out and then folded them together, they would make three dimensional shapes, such as prisms, pyramids, and cubes. The three-dimensional shape you see on your screen is called a prism. Watch as I unfold the prism to display the net. The green and blue shapes are the two-dimensional figures that make up a net. And as you can see, when folded back up, they create the three-dimensional shape that we will call a prism. Let's look at the characteristics of a prism. How many green faces do you see? One, two, three, four. Great job. Now let's count the blue faces. One, two. In this shape, the base of this prism is a square and so is the top. Therefore, those are the blue faces you see highlighted. The green faces are rectangles. And there are four sides to this prism, making this shape a right rectangular prism. The three-dimensional shape you see on your screen now may look familiar. This is a cube. Watch as I open the net. Let's 
count the blue faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. As you can tell, there's only one color, meaning that the cube is made up of six squares. The last three-dimensional shape we will investigate is on your screen, and this is a pyramid. Watch as I open the net. How many triangular faces do you see? One, two, three, four. Those are in red. Now let's count the square faces highlighted in blue. Ah, there's just one. The base of this pyramid is a square and the sides or the faces are triangles. Watch one more time as I close the net to the pyramid to see where they connect at the top. Let's continue this investigation further by finding the surface area of these shapes. Another vocabulary word from our objective was surface area. The surface area is the sum of all areas of the faces or surfaces of a three-dimensional figure. Remember that sum means to add. There's an example to the right and we'll get in more depth later. However, I want you to reflect back to the wrapping paper question. The amount of wrapping paper needed to cover a gift would be the surface area. All right, so let's find the surface area of the triangular prism on your screen. This is the net of a prism because it has the two triangle, triangular faces. So when the shape is folded up, the bases would be triangles. So we're first going to find the area of the rectangle faces labeled A. Know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we are gonna count our spaces in the net to determine what those measurements would be. The length would be one, two, three, four. And the width would be one, two. Four times two is eight, making this shape eight square units. Therefore, the other face labeled A would be eight square units, or we can double it to get 16 square units. Next, we are going to find the area of B. B is a triangle. The area for a triangle is base times height divided by two. Let's find the base of the triangle. One, two, three. And the height is already labeled for us, but let's just count one, two. Three times two is six and six divided by two is three. Therefore, this would be three square units and this would be three square units. Or I could multiply by two to get six total. Lastly, we're gonna find the area of C. The area of C is a rectangle, which is length times width. Again, the length is one, two, three, four. You'll notice it was the same length as A. And the width is one, two, three, which had the same measurement as one of the triangles, which was 12. But four times three is 12. So the area for C is 12. Lastly, according to our definition, we're going to find the sum of all of these areas. And the sum means to add. So we are going to add the area of A, which was 16, the area of the B triangles, which was six, and the area of C, which was 12. So 16 plus six plus 12 is 34 
square units. And that is how we find the surface area of the prism on your screen. Let's continue. Now we're gonna find the surface area of the shape on your screen. This is the net of a square pyramid. If I were to fold these faces up into a three-dimensional shape, it would create a pyramid with four triangular sides and one square base. First, we're gonna find the area of each triangle. I know that the area for a triangle is base times height divided by two. Let's find the base of a triangle. One, two, three, four. Now let's find the height. One, two, three, four, five. I have four times five divided by two. Four times five is 20, and 20 divided by two is 10. Now that means that this triangle is 10. What it also means is this one is 10, this one is 10, and this one is 10, which is why next to area of a triangle, it has times four, because I can multiply it by four or add them all up to get 40. And that's the, the area of all the triangles together. Now, we're gonna find the area of the square base. I know that the area for a square is side times side or length times width. And let's count those sides. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So the area of the square base is four times four, which is 16. Lastly, we are going to add up all of the areas of those shapes to find our surface area. So, to find the surface area, we are going to add up 40 plus 16, which gives us 56 square units. So the surface area of this square pyramid is 56 square units. Great job. Now we're going to find the surface area of the prism presented on your screen. You'll notice that there is no net given to us at this time. However, we are still given the dimensions of the length, the width, and the height. So we're first going to find the area of the front and the back. So I'm gonna highlight that in red so you can see the visual. Here's the front and here's the back. And I want you to look at the dimensions that are associated with that. So I know that since this is a prism, and this is clearly a rectangular prism, since it looks like a box and all the faces are rectangles, that we are going to use this formula here. And I am looking at the length, which is 10. And then in this case, we're looking at that four as being the width. 440. Now 40 represents the area of just one of those. So in order to get the area of both the front and the back, we are going to have to double that to get 80. And in this case, we are talking about inches squared. Now we're going to find the area of the left and the right, which I will highlight for you in purple. So here is the left of this box, here's the right side of that box. So again, we are looking at length times width, and you'll notice here that we're gonna be using the six and the four to help us out. So six times four is 24, and since I have a left and a right, we're gonna double it to get 48, inches squared. Lastly, you're probably noticing we have not done the top or bottom yet. So I'm gonna highlight that in green. So here's the top measurements. 
Oh, sorry, let me grab my color. All right, so we're looking at green as the top and green as the bottom here. All right, so we have a rectangle again. This time the measurements were 10 and 6. to get 60. And since I have two of them, the top and the bottom, we're going to double as well for 120 inches squared. Just like all of the other three-dimensional shapes we've looked at for surface area, the last step is to add them all up. So we are going to say that 80 plus 48 plus 120 is going to equal our surface area. So our surface area is 248 inches squared. So again, the surface area for this rectangular prism is 248 inches squared. Great job. Now it's your turn to show what you know about nets and surface area. And remember, I believe in you. All right, friends, we're gonna to start to think about volume. So look at the image on your screen. I want you to think about which one you would rather have. On the left, you have a cube of gold with 25 meters on each side. And on the right, you have two cubes of gold where one is 24 meters and the other is seven meters. I will give you a moment to think about that. First, I asked my bonus son, Bruce, his answer, and we had some technical difficulties. So now I brought in my husband, Scott, and here is his response. I would rather have the cube of gold that's 25 meters high because it looks larger than the other one. And obviously you'd rather have more gold, right? Yeah. All right, thank you for sharing. Another vocabulary term found in our objective for today is volume. Volume is the number of cubic units needed to fill a given space. There is an example to the right. Volume can be found in such items as the amount of water to fill up a cup, or the amount of water to fill up this lovely pool, how much popcorn could fit in our container, and lastly, how much material is really built, used to build that pyramid. The fourth vocabulary word found in our objective was right rectangular prism. The image next to the vocabulary is a right rectangular prism. Right meaning all right angles, 90 degrees, rectangular faces, Make it the prism. Which of the four images would you consider a right rectangular prism? Did you say the pool? You're correct. We're going to continue to find the volume of right rectangular prisms. Now let's investigate how to find the volume of a rectangular prism. bottom layer of the cubes in this rectangular prism. How many cubes long is the bottom? Four. Now look and determine how many cubes wide is this shape. Three. Therefore, the area of the base, which is a rectangle, is length times width, four times three, which is 12. What is the height of this prism? Height is two. In order to find how many cubes fill this shape or the volume of this rectangular prism, we're going to multiply the area of the base, which is 12, times the height, which is two. 12 times two will give us 24 cubic units. And that's how you find the volume of a rectangular prism. 
Now let's work together to find the volume of the rectangular prism on your screen. If you can recall that volume is the area of the base times the height. Let's begin by labeling our image. The length would be six, the width is four, and the height is five. So let's first find the area of our base, which is a rectangle. So we are going to use the formula length times width. We're going to substitute our values in, which is six times four. Six times four is 24 inches squared. Now we're going to identify our height, which over here I'm going to state is five inches. We are going to use these values and substitute them in to our volume formula. Volume is equal to the area of the base, which was 24 times five. 24 times five is 120 inches cubed. And that, my friends, is the volume of the rectangular prism on your screen. Great job. Let's try one last problem together. We're going to find the volume of the deck of cards on your screen. Don't be scared by those fractions, I promise. This is just as simple as the last questions we worked on together. Recall that volume is the area of the base times the height. So before we begin, let's identify our measurements. Seems as if the length is two inches, the width is a half inch, and the height is three and a half inches. So the area of the base is a rectangle, and we are going to use the formula length times width. Now let's substitute our values in. The length was two, and the width was a half. Hmm. How do I multiply a whole number times a fraction? Let's think way back, way back. I can put one underneath two as the denominator, and now I can multiply straight across. Two times one is two, and one times two is two. Again, two over two, I can simplify to be one. So the area of the base is just one inch squared. Now, let's find the height. I'm going to look at my image and determine that it was three and a half inches. And we're gonna substitute those values into our formula. So the area of the base was one, the height was three and a half. And I know that any number times one is itself, therefore the volume is three and a half inches cubed. See, I told you those fractions weren't scary. Great job. Now it's time to show what you know about volume. Remember, you got this. So what did we learn? Let's reflect back to our outcomes for today. First, students will identify nets and use nets to find the surface area of a solid. Second, students will find the volume of right rectangular prisms with fractional edge lengths. I'm going to give you a moment to self-reflect on these two objectives. If you feel anything less than confident, please remember to reach out to your teacher during virtual office hours or the class meeting. I'm sure they would love to hear from you. Well, that's it friends for this week's Math 6 edition of BCPS TV. This is Ms. Barr, your host, and I'm logging off. I hope you all have a healthy and happy week.